me at Jello, Jello. You had me at Jello. You had me at Jello. Oh, you had me at Jello. Hello, everybody. Five o'clock on a Friday. Time for another episode of Jello Chat. And with me today is Ariana Wegley. How are you doing today, Ariana? Um, I'm good. Um, I I saw a movie last night. Um, I, I enjoy going to screenings um, of films that I like at local theaters. Um, so uh, I saw one last night, and I'm um, a bit tired from that. <laughs> but, but doing well. I really like movies. I really like film. So I, I, I like doing that during the week. <laughs> Now, can you tell a bit about your background? What drew you to cello in the first place and how did you get to where you are now? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I don't come from a musical family on um, necessarily, but I come from very artistic um, families. My, my father and my mother are both amazing um, visual arts people. They're both very... Um, artistically expressive and I grew up around that but um I didn't really know that I could play an instrument until I was offered the the opportunity um at school so I went to public school um in Robbinsdale Minnesota um and I was given an option to choose between violin viola cello um in fourth grade and um my reference point was listening to my my dad's um, first generation iPod, <laughs> just kind of finding finding the iPod, borrowing it, and listening to um, anything that was on there. And so one one, one thing that I came across was um, the first Yo Yo Ma's first album of recording the Bach Cello Suites, classic, classic, <laughs> a little cliche, but also very. Very, very truly amazing for me when I was a kid. And um, I could just listen to that for so long. And I was very inspired to um, someday make a similar tone, make a similar sound, because I um, was so curious how that was possible. Um, so I figured out that was cello. And I wanted to try playing that in school. Um, and then from then on, that kind of became my activity or my focus outside of school. and. Um, family life at home um so I found myself doing pretty exclusively summer music activities um joining youth orchestras um I was in Gitsies, um Greater Twin Cities Youth Symphonies um and my teachers in high school um Mina Fisher and Tom Rosenberg um for for chamber music um they helped me get to a point where I decided that I wanted to do music in, in college. So um, I ended up going to the University of Minnesota, studying with Tanya Romanikova, who is um, an amazing, amazing um, force. She's just so impressive and so um, also very humble and um, really um, just is able to um, express so much um, in a lesson. And I felt like every time I saw her every week, I was so lucky to to glean something from her experience and from her ideas. Um, just like very honored to be able to work with her. Um, and I also worked um, a lot on chamber music at the U, um, had some also very um, inspiring mentors in the, in the uh, woodwind department, um, also other mentors in the strings department, um, and um, I was also doing a double degree in English. So some of my projects um, ended up being um, kind of like interdisciplinary um, uh, essays and performances that kind of linked together different concepts I was interested in. Um, a lot of what I was learning um, in literature uh, directly corresponded to what I was learning in music. So um, that was a really exciting time for me. I felt um, 
excited about new music. By the time I was graduating, I was uh, really into George Crumb and <laughs> I found myself, um, yeah, graduating school and trying to um, think about auditions for orchestras, thinking about um, programming my own recitals and concerts, um, subbing here and there or playing with different smaller chamber ensembles found myself with the Def Delphia cello quartet, um, playing a lot of different arrangements that they, that all the members compose, especially Julia Floberg, um, who started the group. Um, and I was just about to sub for the St. Thomas Orchestra on a tour to um, Berlin. And um, then the pandemic started in, in 2020. Um, so um, for a while there, um, I didn't really have a musical outlet. I didn't have a musical um group that I was playing with and I hadn't really experimented with um, anything totally on my own before. So um, that was a big turning point for me. I, I, I probably would have continued playing um, more in a chamber setting just naturally, but I found myself with uh, my cello and computer um, and a couple of synthesizers that I bought off Craigslist. <laughs> so, um, that's when I became really interested in composing. Um, and we'll probably talk more about that. Um, but <clears throat> that's kind of the phase that I feel like I'm, I've entered now in my musical life is a, a focus on, um, creating sounds and, and songs and, um, just kind of like purely trying things out, fussing around on my instruments um, to make new music um, that I enjoy and that I hope other people enjoy. Um, and now I am playing again with Delphia. Um, excited yeah. to go visit um, University of Whitewater uh, at Whitewater. But um, yeah. Hope that hope that made sense. <laughs> that tracked, but um, yeah, I, I I am just kind of now getting into playing uh, more with with ensembles again that that um um are a little bit more of outside outside of my own projects. Um, I play with um, a band, and I also see a lot of um, bands perform, and I'm very inspired by that as well. Um, in addition to seeing um going to you know participating in um other kinds of classical performance around the twin cities but um yeah all right so with the composing well i i think it's it's interesting you're drawn first to a yo-yo ma box suite album and then you mentioned george crumb but the the spaceport album is i mean again i think indie is the the adjective but that's very broad so i mean it it um i think it's fair to say that your your tastes and your compositions just kind of you, you they go wherever that you you know they take you you mm -hmm. also express on your website an interest in extended techniques and i'm just kind of wondering this willingness to explore on the cello that we kind of do when we explore extended techniques, just like, how mm -hmm. do I make this sound? Ooh, I can make that sound too. I'm just kind of wondering, part in the horse, chicken and the egg, to what extent when you're exploring through extended techniques, does that lead to a new compositional idea? Or to what extent do you have a particular idea in your mind beforehand, and you're trying to figure out how to bring that out of the cello? Yeah, it's a great, great question. Um, in school, um, I had ex been experimenting with different tunings um, and different um, applications of 
like bow um pressure or just different ways of using the bow that um I had either seen or kind of came up with <laughs> in in school and I thought that I thought it was um really it was it was really exciting for me to hear synthesized sounds in particular and try to emulate those so um that kind of came about um when I started actually programming synthesizers so I have a couple that I that I started out with um but just really just taking like eight hours in a day and messing around on a synthesizer is like it'll change your brain you know it's like it's it's just the possibilities are endless and you like think about sound more as a as a like a natural phenomenon in some kind of for me I, I actually pictured a wave in a way that I had it before um and how you can manipulate all these conditions and all these like aspects of um sound and ideas of resonance and um really it's just finding something that sounded really otherworldly or mysterious um inexplicable and then trying to kind of recreate that on the cello really doing anything that I thought was in with was within reason so like um at some points I've like played my cello with like a rubber spatula <laughs> or like have kind of tacked on little like clips to my cello to create certain vibrations or um yeah playing with um bow harmonics or like really experimenting with harmonics as well and alternate tunings um and I find that those sounds are really really complex and they honestly kind of sound like very electronic in certain ways um but I, I think the knowledge that you can kind of like create a sound with a totally acoustic instrument that is um so kind of like equally or more mysterious than a sound created by a computer or like a digital um computer or something that's that's really mind-blowing to me and it, it's like a very it's a big source of inspiration so um when I'm coming up with like something that sounds weird I try to use both try to use both instruments um and really thinking of anything as an instrument has been an, important for me. Um, and in terms of like musical taste, I forgot to mention this, <laughs> my um, so a big source of inspiration for me is Sufjan Stevens. I got really into Sufjan Stevens um, after after my kind of late college after college, and he has this album called Age of Odds that. It was kind of this like experimentation in electronic music um, and also many other instruments and textures. And so that's probably what I'm what I'm thinking of when I'm writing music is trying to kind of <clears throat> be orchestral in that sense where there's all these different instruments that are contributing to some composite sound or standing on their own in in concert with something else I think that's really interesting to have very um disparate textures and um things that kind of weave in and out um that's might, might even be imper imperceptible but it's still very interesting to me yeah all right well now I'm curious to what extent do does this um uh both the things that you've discovered that you can do with the cello acoustically or synthesized um, and also just the process, the willingness to, to explore for eight hours in a day and then do it the next day. To what mm -hmm. extent do these inform your, your private or group cello lesson? Um, well, a lot of my students, um, are not actually given the option to play an instrument. Um, I work at a school where playing a string instrument um, 
in the violin family is actually part of the curriculum. So um, in grade three, they're, um, yeah, they've, they've been given um, an additional class and they're in their, in their, um, in their day where they have to um, dedicate an hour um, to, to string playing. And then uh, on top of that, they have to um, also seek out lessons. So um, a lot of my students start out really excited um, to be learning a new instrument or learning a, their first instrument. And then um, they realize that it's quite difficult to play cello <laughs> and it's not a kind of instant gratification or it's um, it takes years, it takes years. And it's like a deep patience um, and some kind of flame of curiosity that's like always burning, I feel. So um, I sympathize with that because when I started, I I was very excited and then I kind of burned out for me and I was hoping to play electric guitar, which I got around to later. <laughs> but um, I just, I wasn't excited about what I was playing. So um, for me, it was um, like finding some video game and movie music, which I know is um, very common for young, for young people to kind of like really be excited about and um, feel familiar, feel familiarity with um, movie, movie music. So um, I, the way I feel about that is like with my students, um, I try to do a mixture of things. So a mixture of um, Suzuki and a mixture of composition um, and a mixture of something that they feel drawn to, like something that they can pick from their inspirations from their life. And we try to, I do a lot of arranging for them so that we can work on all kinds of music. And I like to kind of give them um, all these ideas about things to listen to and um, kind of like remembering that when you come to the cello, um, there's really endless possibilities and anything is okay in a sense. Like you can always try anything and I'm going to do my best to kind of give you a form um, and like a physical approach that'll let you do that in like a healthy way. That's what I care about most is having them approach the cello in a way that's um, works for their bodies. So then they can kind of use that knowledge to really try things out because a lot of them are um, interested in, in music, but um, I feel have very busy lives that don't, um, that, that aren't very focused on learning an instrument. So and learning an instrument like cello, which takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, and like I said, like deep patience. <laughs> um, so yeah, to keep things interesting, I just try to be honest as well, just with my own um, experience with cello. I, I really needed to try something different with writing like pop music and working with electronic music for my own um, longevity at playing music felt like I kind of needed to start making uh, music that was totally different than what I had played before um, and just crossing over into a genre. Um, yeah, it can be really scary or really daunting and just um, confusing and yeah, a lot of expectations with, with that, but just like, I don't know, just, just being able to kind of sit down and think about what sounds cool to you and how to make that sound is I think a, a pretty worthwhile skill. Um, so yeah. Well, okay. So then I ask everybody a question about motivation. It's from just everything on your website and what you've said so far, for example, you clearly derive inspiration out of a lot of things a lot of the other arts and things beyond what are considered the arts. And sometimes 
sometimes students can just pick up on that, that we're modeling the way to be curious and inspired by all manner of things and follow that. But in other cases, students need a little help, you know, um, getting motivated to play or to practice. And they appreciate getting a little bit of uh, additional ideas from the teacher. So what's in your playbook as far as helping to inspire students to do more of the, the deep patience work that it takes to get to that level where it's really fun? Yeah, um, usually when I um, like <clears throat> when I have a lesson, I try to structure it in a way where I'm 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 there, but it's something that they could do without me in a sense. Like, or when we when we go through like the flow in particular of setting up, um, warming up, deciding what to work on taking breaks and try, I try to kind of imitate the rhythm of what that might look like on their own. Um, and a lot of times I feel like I'm there guiding my student, but it's a shared kind of like um, a shared goal that we have to work on something. I, I always want them to feel like at the end of our lesson, okay, this is, this would be a good um this would be a good practice session for you to do on your own, exactly what we did today. And kind of walk them through how to practice in such a way where um, they're really breaking things down um, and spending a lot of time on maybe one thing um, and then freely stepping away from that. Um, for example, um, just with with um, the bow, I feel the bow is a big, really, uh, this is such, such a huge thing to think about when you introduce the bow. It's like you're, the whole world is a gravity ball. <laughs> but um, thinking about just like roundedness and like shapes on the cello, like the bridge is a curved plane, you know, so when we draw the bow, we're kind of drawing the, the opposite of that shape and kind of like scooping the sound out. Um, and if we try to draw the bow in like a totally, on a totally flat line shape, if that actually doesn't work with the way the cello's built or just kind of noticing these kind of um, shapes and colors and in, in the instrument, because these are really young kids that I work with, they're probably eight, not eight, nine, 10, usually. Um, and um, that's really important so that they can kind of <clears throat> make connections with um, things and you know things in other aspects of their life, like the sound of a train. Or so I had one student who played something and immediately was like, "Oh, that sounds just like a train." So we talked about how trains work. What are you know how do trains move? Kind of what kind of, um, you know, different sounds might a train make? You know, maybe we think of one, what are, what are some other ones? How can we try to make those? Um, but just like kind of giving them images, uh, shapes, um, kind of like scenes uh, in a structure of setting up, warming up, practicing, thinking, you know, all these kind of different phases of what it means to like enter into a practice session and then come away from that feeling like you um, like figured something out and then being excited to try that again. Um, but I also, um, you know, I'm a person who enjoys spending a lot of time by myself. So for me, it's kind of like, I'm okay spending eight hours on a synthesizer, <laughs> but that's not super common. So, so I also have to kind of negotiate what I'm imagining a student might be interested in and what I'm interested in because those things are probably different so um it takes a lot of like relationship building with with the, with the student to kind of know exactly what they need to feel excited um because I think that they all have so many different um 
pathways of exploration in their life that that try to connect those. You know, if someone's related to basketball, finding some kind of connection, illustration, someone's really into skiing, there's all these kind of like kinetic movements that um, tie in that are really maybe not expected, but really valuable to to compare and to connect. So. That's true. Yeah, the attention span of some eight and nine and 10 year olds is such that um, to try to get them to rest their attention over to uh, a specific assignment rather than try to find the ways to make the assignment align with where their attention likes to go anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. right. So let's see. We're very excited to have the Delphia Quartet come on April 22nd. We're going to have a big crowd, too. We've got excellent numbers already. It's going to be great. And my cello ensemble at Whitewater is very excited with the qualification that when we try one of the pieces that we're working on with that has us play and sing at the same time, these otherwise really brave students uh, I mean, right now they're tackling the passage work in, in Brahms Symphony 1, uh, just like Champions, for example. But mm -hmm. then suddenly they just have to sing, in some cases, slowly moving, but while they're also playing. And they um, get a little bit, uh, let, shall we say, there's some trepidation there. So I'm just mm -hmm. kind of wondering, what, when Delphia Quartet does this, do you all envision just that singing while playing should just be um, just kind of like a natural outgrowth of our approach to singing through our instrument? Or is it a way to kind of, we always, as string players, we talk about the need to breathe, to pay attention to our breathing, even though we don't need the breathing as part of our sound production. Or, or how do you all approach that? Well, um, I, I'm sure that we all approach it a little differently. So I, I really can only speak to how I do it, but um, I know Julia has been doing it for a long time and um, I haven't been doing it for very long, just the last couple of years. Um, but I, it took me a while to actually become aware of my singing voice. It, it like was like a non-existent thing to me for so long in my life. And then um, I just kind of slowly tried it over time at home in the privacy of my own home, which is like kind of an important thing for me, I think, just to kind of like, just like dump all this stuff that I want to try when I'm by myself. Cause then it's like no expectations, you know, I'll, this ha is happening here. And then in one moment it's not, you know, there's some kind of like immense freedom in that and no one else is going to know. <laughs> um, but I think for me, Playing cello, I do think of it as uh, a little bit more now as a vocal experience. I mean, it's like, it's like kind of, especially when I'm thinking of composing and arranging, it sits in, sits in the register of the human voice or, you know, things like that, that we kind of grow up knowing, but, but then kind of become aware of when we start singing with the cello, because it really is kind of like a voice that's kind of, um, coming from your core I feel or coming from like your diaphragm or like yeah you have a strong core that kind of like pushes sound out or kind of like breathes it out with an exhale um but I also feel like my own voice is um perhaps a little bit um disconnected from that in a, in my body I, I, I kind of imagine them coming from a different place but all yeah from a source of or like from the movement of breath um, and I think in my head, literally when I'm doing this is like these slots in the air. <laughs> and like when I'm thinking of pitch or something, pitch and tone, like they kind of fit into a slot and like the, the, the vibration of the voice and the tone of the cello is, um, kind of like coming into some alignment. Um, and that's a very visual thing for me. It's hard for me to to separate it out from that but um it's it, i don't think of them as um 
necessarily coming from like the same source, but they do feel very unified. I feel like when you, when you sing and play an instrument, you do have to kind of like bond the two together um, for any instrument that I've ever played while singing. Cause when you're thinking of them as a kind of separate entities, they can kind of start to uh, misalign or something. Um, so they, I, for me, they do have to be quite synchronized and like united and in, in movement and in contour and shape and trying to kind of like hear both of them as harmony together. Okay. Um, That's interesting. I find that interesting. I mean, because one of the things that we were talking about was, uh, so for example, to sing and just do, let's say percussion or something mm -hmm. that's very different from the human voice, it's less tempting for the ear to kind of conflate the two sounds. Whereas mm -hmm. sometimes a cello sound can be so similar to what we're singing. I think, at least for some of the students, that yeah. too was distracting for a moment. It's like, wait, which is the sound that I'm playing and which is the sound that I'm making with my voice? But learning yeah. to kind of embrace that and have that become an intentional uh duet or or folding in of the two sounds yeah or kind of like a new sound it's like a new sound of like voice and you know i feel like uh, working with synthesizers too it's like you can kind of like make a new sound in some kind of like fusion and so that's a cool image for me when i'm thinking of voice and cello um yeah all right well now talk about this new album that's coming out if you will yeah, yeah. Uh, so for the past year and a half, um, I've, um, I've, I, I, I wrote nine songs over over the course of that time, and um, I um, play cello, synthesizers, um, guitars on this album that is many different things, and it's so hard to describe your music. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's 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 um, I was um, it's this is so hard. Sorry, let me just think about this for, for a minute. Um, but it's kind of like a a me connecting dots about everything that I've ever liked or learned in my life. You know, it's like one of those where you you kind of have these. Um, yeah, you're trained in a certain way musically and you use that. You don't, I, I think of it less as like a departure from my former training. I think of it as like my former training has kind of led me to this point where that I can um, tie it in with these other things that I'm interested in or that I want to try, you know, like I'm coming to this project uh, where I'm writing songs and singing as a cellist who is trying out singing and writing, you know, and who is uh, like in this stage where I feel um, not, you know, kind of like out of my, um, um, yeah, out of my zone in a way. I feel like I feel kind of like out of my comfort zone with playing guitar and with um, playing piano, but that's really freeing because you really can just like, try things and you can um you know give yourself a certain like new approach that is only possible when you're first starting out and I feel like that's a good thing for students to remember too is like they're in their special space of like you can only be new to something for so long you know <laughs> and, like there's just like a, a like a freedom to try things and I um it was inspired by um, like a, kind of like a lo-fi bedroom pop sound. Um, like I said, I'm a big fan of Sufjan Stevens. I really like Meg Duffy of Hand Habits. Um, and um, in terms of like emulating sound, I was I was considering what how did, you know what are the structure of their songs? What what kinds of sounds are they using? You know what what is their songwriting like? Just I think it's so nice to be able to like listen to a song and pick out the different instruments and sounds you're hearing and like notice these patterns and in, in bands or um, songwriters that 
don't necessarily have to like teach you how to do that, but can like signal to you like, okay, what if I try this? You know, like what if I try um writing a song um about robots or something. Or you know, it's like <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of different things that go on in the mind when you're working on music. But I was thinking of um to a lot of um, experiences that I have in my daily life. So a lot of these songs are kind of about like um, a daily life. It's pretty monotonous and kind of noticing all these, these cool things that happen um, and kind of like breaking things down into very small chunks of experience. Um, yeah. I, um, I feel a lot of different ways about my, about my album that are really hard to explain, but um yeah, it's really a, it really is like a, a a sea of me trying to kind of like figure things out on different instruments and try a lot of new things. So, I think Mendelssohn had one of the best quotes about the difficulty of putting using words to describe music. But yeah. the, the band is called Spaceport, and the album is called Window Seat. Yeah, the band is called Spaceport, um, and the album's Window Seat. Uh, yes. Now, just one other question. To what extent do you see uh, cello specifically and maybe bowed strings in general increasing in the future in terms of their use in non-classical music? And is that going to play a role in helping the each successive generation stay interested in playing strings? Yeah, um, definitely. I think that a lot of, um, there's a lot of like, there's so much, so much new music in all respects, but, um, a lot of electronic music, um, that I find is, yeah, emulating or synthesizing sounds of acoustic instruments or kind of electroacoustic music is um, pretty big. Yeah, it's 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 like a growing growing genre, um, and I feel like people are really interested in in the kind of convergence of very like a, a very natural um, earthen instrument, like a wooden instrument is is it capable of making some kind of very unique sound um and um in like in synchronicity with electronic instruments and other you know other mechanisms of of music making i think it's really kind of special to have all these different um possibilities with cello and with violin with instruments in the violin family I don't know I think I think they're they're uh they're honestly like gonna be a very coveted sound honestly I think people are are really interested in a lot of different um like possibilities of how weird you can make this, the instruments and maybe this is just like my circle <laughs> my circle of friends is like super interested in like weird sounds that the that cellos can make you know that's um, but I really, yeah, I, I, I don't see those instruments kind of falling out of, um, falling out of interest in like the larger population. I, I, I guess the, the, the one the the major barrier is that cellos are hard to make and they're very expensive and kind of for the most part inaccessible, like totally inaccessible to a lot of people and that's um really hard to navigate and I think that um I I can see it being being harder to acquire cello and to kind of learn cello in a way that gives you a lot of you know a, a expansive toolkit and how to how to um make the sound you want to make um but I, I don't really know what, what to say more about that. I think I think that's kind of like a thoughts floating in my head. Um, 
but I, I think the interest and desire for people to be making music with cellos is 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 strong and um, very special. Sure. Uh, any other upcoming projects in 2023? Performances or or irons you have in fire, so to speak. Um, as far as projects, um, I, I can't say for now, but I'm always working, on something. <laughs> always working on something. So I think if you're, yeah, if you're, yeah, if, if, if anyone is interested in this, I think the best thing to do would, would be to just kind of follow it and see what happens. You know, I think I'm, I'm making music that I really think is fun for me. And I, um, also it's something that I really can't live without so it's one of those things where it's like I turn to it to be creative on my own I also really enjoy making projects and sharing them with people and working with friends and collaborating but um as far as for, for performances we have if you're in Minneapolis if you happen to be watching this you're in Minneapolis <laughs> um my band they support this project that just released an album last Friday um is doing a show at the Treasury, which is a very cool all ages venue in St. Paul. Um, next Thursday, 7 p.m. And then uh, we're playing at Palmer's, which is a pretty uh, well-established classic uh, bar <laughs> joint. <laughs> On March 29th, we're going to play a really fun show with synthesizers um, and yeah, some, some fellow musicians that I admire. Um, so, yeah. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ariana. And again, we, we can't wait to have you all come down on April 22nd. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time and for setting this up. And it's really, really lovely to talk to you and meet you. Um, and um, yeah, very excited to come visit and to play with the, the cello quartet. We've been working. We've been working on it. We're, we're very excited. So, yeah. yeah. All right, everybody out there, happy practicing all weekend, all week. We'll see you this time next Friday.